First story. My golden child sister demands, I give her the house I renovated because her husband lost his job doing a shady business and has a kid. My entitled parents took her side and told me to move out, saying I don't need that much space since my boyfriend died anyway. My 34F sister 31F was the first of four siblings to have a child 5F. My niece is incredibly spoiled by my sister, our parents, and extended family. And my parents bend over backwards for my sister's requests like canceling their anniversary trip because my sister asked to babysit while she goes on a girl's weekend. This spring, my boyfriend and rock in my life passed away. At the same time, I lost my job. I had a lot going on and moved back to my hometown. My parents own a rural property they used to rent out. The property had been empty for a while and was fairly run down. My parents invited me to stay there rent-free and told me it was my home for as long as I needed. I invested a lot of my time and money founding a remote gig into getting the house fixed up. I also made friends with Alha, a Ukrainian refugee with a young daughter. Alha was struggling, and I invited her to stay with me for a couple of months. While she gets back on her feet, I could use company as well. She was very thankful, but hasn't made a firm response yet as she's trying to make things work independently. My parents had no issue with this. Until recent drama. My brother-in-law had been working for a shady company, which skirted regulations for profit. The law had caught up with the owner, who folded the company and left the country. I'll cut this short given the post-character limit. A few other things went down, and my sister's family abruptly moved to our hometown, moving in with my parents. Almost immediately, my parents and sister approached me to swap I moved in with our parents, and sis and her family took my place. They said the house I lived in was too large for one person, and it'd be so much better for my niece to live on a beautiful property in nature. I didn't understand. My parents have two guest rooms. My sister Bill and the kid have their own bedrooms I sure didn't at five. My Bill is still loaded from his old job and could easily get them a place. Two they are buying a flashy car. When I mentioned my work on the property, it was dismissed. When I reminded them about Alha, my parents were outraged. I was still intent on helping someone else and their child, not my own sister and niece. They kept making out that my sister's situation was nearly as bad as Alha's. Eventually, it came down to my parents saying, you're living on our property, you'll do as we want. I said, well, you gave it to me and said this was my house as well, to be my home for as long as I needed. But if we want to talk in property terms and not family terms, evict me then. My parents are not evicting, but I receive daily calls and messages from them. And extended family guilt is tripping me and calling me an awe for not giving up the more comfortable space to my sister, who is in such a difficult situation, and has a little child. Only my brothers see my side. But since they are young men in college, their opinion means nothing to my family. I feel like I am taking crazy pills. Ada. Update 2. Ada for refusing to move out of the property my parents gave me so that my golden child sister, her husband, and her kid could move in. I figured people who followed my profile might care to know how the situation was resolved. But for this update to make sense, I need to clarify some things about my bill that didn't fit into the original post. My bill's job was technically legal, but morally reprehensible. What his boss and some co-workers were caught in was outright illegal. The situation was very messy, and my bill and sister decided to move from their city to our hometown to avoid getting dragged into it further and consider their options. It was an abrupt decision and a dramatic arrival. When I referred to Bill being judged by my parents' neighbors and grocers, I meant people in my hometown treating him negatively after finding out what he did. After my post, I needed time to figure out what to do. Everybody seemed to agree, if for different reasons, that I should leave my parents' house. I explained to Alha that I had to rescind my offer, which she was still considering. As I said in my original post, not sure why everyone thought she'd rejected it already. Meanwhile, Bill was having the worst time. After living the high life, he was suddenly stuck in his wife's boring hometown, in his in-law's guest bedroom, with random small-town folks having the audacity to judge him. So, just a few weeks after their emergency move, he announced he was done and took his family back to their house. If that sounds ridiculous to you, it was far more ridiculous to watch in I heard about them. Bill was pursuing a role in a project overseas with one of his former clients. It would pay even more than his old job. With my sister and her family gone, my parents said I could remain in the house. As my father put it, they support even their cruelest child. But they are now against me inviting people to stay or any renovations things they were fine with before. Yes, including inviting Olha, as I said in my previous post. 
They are being so petty that my father tried to stop a family plumber from fixing a broken shower at my request. The plumber told him to pound sand. Many comments suggested, I should remove the improvements I made. While that appealed to the petty side of me, realistically, I can't rip out the wiring and whatnot. I no longer speak to my mother, and my extended family still thinks I am disgusted for not prioritizing the needs of a mother and a child. We used to be a family that fought like hell, but made up and stood by each other. But this one feels different. Of course, I will not be staying much longer. But I will leave at the time that best suits me, ignoring any moral obligations. There is nothing but bitterness where love for my family used to be except my brothers. Probably that confirms. My family is sure I'm one. As Bill's example shows, being an arsey hole is great, so why not? Last time, I tried to answer as many comments as possible and drained myself badly. Please know that if you gave me your time and thought, I read and appreciated that. Second story. My entitled Syl demands my daughter's heirlooms to her, just because she got kicked out of her family, and now entering ours, my delusional brother took her side. Now they are planning to uninvite me and threaten to go to NC, thinking I'll butch. This is my first Reddit post, throwaway. Also, English is not my first language. My 53F mother passed away 10 years ago, and I inherited a few select pieces of jewelry from her. Those are things she cherished and wore often. I have been wearing her watch for the past 10 years. My sister 50F holds a golden bracelet that she loves, and there are three items left that me and my sister have been planning to give to my three daughters 20, 18 and 18 to commemorate 10 years since her passing. They always knew this and were close to their grandmother. There is also no quarrel about who gets what. Enter my brother 48M and his fiancée 38F of two years. My brother is demanding one of the pieces for his future wife to wear. He claims we never involved him in any discussion as to what should happen to the pieces, and we can't just claim those to ourselves just because we are women. He says it's very common for heirloom jewelry to be given to the daughter-in-law, and he and his fiancée even cited Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton as examples. Legally, there is no case to be made. My mother left those items to me. I have politely declined their request, explaining that I can't let one of my daughters go without, and that they were very close to their grandma, while his fiancée did not know her. His fiancée is apparently distraught and claims we don't see her as family. My father wants me to keep the items and give one to my brother, so that all of my mom's kids eventually get one item, and I can do as I see fit with the rest. My sister has kindly offered up her bracelet. I am torn. I don't want to antagonize my brother and my sister-in-law, but I find my three daughters' claims so much more valid. They have been looking forward to this for years, and I don't want my sister to sacrifice her bracelet. If there were more pieces, I would not hesitate to give something to her. It's not a matter of money. I have offered other things out of my mom's estate. They feel it's not the same. I am also taking into account that my brother was married to his first wife ten years ago. And despite having been close to my mother, she got no jewelry either, but was left two of my mother's watercolor drawings. I feel like my mother left those pieces for me with the intention of eventually passing them on to her granddaughters. Would she have subscribed to the each child or each daughter plus daughter-in-law has to get a piece of jewelry logic. She would have left something to my brother or his then-wife in the first place. My daughters told me they would accept any decision I made, but I feel it would be highly unfair to burden them with any involvement in the decision-making process. The choice is mine to make, and I have to live with the consequences. According to my father, they are debating whether to exclude me from the wedding over this. I stand by my decision, but it's hard. I was always on good terms with my brother and cordial with his fiancée, so Ada. Relevant comments OP had over 100. So this is very narrowed down. Commenter. OP, she doesn't want to feel closer to her new family. She wants to know that she can push your brother to get her what she wants, even at the expense of his relationship with all of you. It's a game she is playing now, before they get married. So she knows exactly how far she can push you all, and what she can get her greedy hands on with a temper tantrum, and some threats to exclude you all. Tell your brother the legacy he received is two watercolor paintings his ex-wife has, and he's welcome to chase her down for that if he feels so strongly about it. But your jewelry was a gift your grandmother gave to you, and it is staying with you until you give it to your daughters. Friend, if you cave to your brother and sill on this, you'll be handing SHT over as long as their marriage lasts. And TA. OP, wow, thanks for the clarity and direct words. I am starting to feel like I am in denial about how bad this really is. It's worth mentioning that my brother obviously received his own inheritance as well. To another commenter. Also, 
he got a sizable inheritance back then. And his wife got two original artworks. Those jewelry pieces are worth approximately $1,000 each. While my mother's original artworks are valued at $1,000 to $3,000, she was an illustrator. So the issue is really not me sitting on a $50,000 diamond ring while they received two worthless sketches. Commenter. Your dad presumably still had items from his wife. He can give one of his treasures to her. You, your sister, and your three daughters got one item each. Not up for renegotiation. OP, we already offered it. But she claims it must be jewelry, so she can wear it on her wedding day. Commenter. Since the brother and fiancé seem to want to make the decision, ask them which granddaughter they feel deserves to be deprived of her grandmother's memento, and how they intend to compensate said daughter for her exclusion from grandmotherly keepsakes. Tell them you cannot, in good conscience, hand anything over to the fiancé, unless they can give a reasonable answer to these questions. OP. My husband actually asked them that. And their answer was that they believe that the twins should share. Which is obviously not going to happen as long as I am here to prevent it. Commenter. How does the Sill even know about the jewelry? OP. I plan to give it to my girls at a family dinner commemorating our mother's birthday next month, and gave everyone a heads up. That's how she got to know. Commenter. You have three daughters. Your mother left you three items. It's pretty self-explanatory. Your mother didn't have to spell it out for you. She just left them with you for safekeeping. If that wasn't her intention, she would have given them to your dad. Plus, your daughters had a personal relationship with your mom their grandmother. You have the watch. Your sister got the bracelet. Your daughters get the other three. OP thanks. I feel exactly the same way. I can't for the life of me see where my brother claims we should have involved him in any discussion concerning who gets what because, in my view, it's absolutely clear who gets what. And since she left those things to me, it's up to me to make the decision. She could have left them to anybody else, but she didn't. What else am I going to do with three pieces when I have three daughters? Commenter. Tell your brother to stick with it. These are for your daughter or her bloodline. This is so entitled and ridiculous. OP. I actually don't care so much about the bloodline thing. If my father were to die tomorrow and each of these children would get some beloved sentimental items, I would be really pissed if my husband, who is very close to him, would not get anything. Plus, I really understand why she wants to have something to feel more connected to her new family, especially since she is estranged from her parents and won't get anything from them to wear on her wedding day. The problem lies solely in the fact that I don't have anything to give her without hurting other people. I will not prioritize her feelings above those of my daughters. Commenter. I bet the reason she is estranged from her parents is an eye-opener, if you ever find it out. Whatever she told you, it was BS. OP, I don't know the reason, but I will admit the thought has crossed my mind. The fact that she is willing to blatantly ignore her niece's feelings, and that wearing a piece of heirloom jewelry on her wedding day is more important to her than the girl's connection to their beloved grandmother is a bit concerning to me. Commenter. If she's trying to feel closer to your family, is there any jewelry that is yours or your sister's that could be given or loaned to her for her wedding day that isn't inherited from your mother? Your sister and your daughters, who actually knew and loved your mother, should, of course, take precedence over someone who has only heard about her. NTA. And your brother is being absurdly pushy. OP. We have now decided to pitch in together to buy something new for her to wear on her wedding day and have as a gift from the family. I hope she will accept this. I could also give her something from me as a loan, but I feel buying something specifically for her would probably be better. It's not that I feel she shouldn't have anything, and I would honestly offer to give her a piece if I had any spare pieces to give. Commenter. NTA. Your brother is marrying a psycho. She's never met your mother, but is distraught that she can't wear her dead mother's jewelry. You are correct. Your mom left the jewelry to you, and, as you stated, your mom didn't even leave your brother's wife's jewelry when she passed. Your brother and his fiancé are acting crazy entitled, and you need to tell them no, and that if they bring it up again, you'll have to excuse yourself from their presence. They are trying to bully you out of your daughter's heirloom jewelry, their birthrights. OP. I can actually see why she would like to have something. We were all very close with mom and kept her memory alive, and it's tricky to enter into such a dynamic years later. I would give her something, especially something to wear on her wedding day she is estranged from her parents, if I had anything to give but I can't take anything away from my daughters to help her feel better. Commenter. NTA. The items were left to you. No matter what happens in the future, your daughters will be your daughters. The same can't be said for your brother's fiancé. That relationship could end, 
and then the jewelry wouldn't be part of the family anymore. If they were married when your mother passed, maybe I'd consider it. But they haven't tied the knot, so don't give her anything. OP. This has been brought up a lot, but I feel I can't, in good conscience, bring up the fact that their marriage might fail as an argument. Commenter. NTA if your mom specifically left them to you. If you and your sister decided between yourselves to take all of the nice jewelry without giving any to your brother, what about if or when he has daughters? OP, he was childless back then, with no intention of starting a family, and his first wife got an inheritance of her own, as did he. He was completely fine with us deciding what to do with the jewelry, as neither he nor his ex-wife were interested. The issue only came up with his fiancé recently. Had he voiced his objections ten years ago, I would not have spent the last ten years preparing my daughters, and the situation would be different. Also, legally, all items belong to me, and I am under no obligation to share or discuss them with anyone. I discussed it with my sister because it seemed fitting. Again, he was not interested. Ask the first wife for paintings. Asking first wife for her paintings might be an even harder question than the jewelry question, honestly. She received those paintings because she loved our mother and her art. And she was a family member in her own right after replacing my mother as my disabled father's full-time caretaker after my mother fell ill. I am not close to her anymore. But I respect her and my mother's wishes enough to not hunt her down after seven years for what is legally and rightfully hers. Update same post. Next day. Thank you all for your kind messages and advice. I would never have expected to get so much valuable support and insider advice from strangers on the internet. Thank you really from the bottom of my heart. We came together with my brother and his fiancé after I had read many of your replies to my husband and my sister. I stated clearly that I will support her in any way possible and that it's very important for me to welcome her home to the family properly. But the jewelry is off the table because I believe I am fulfilling my mother's wishes and I cannot hurt my daughters. I added that I believe that this is not the right way to join a family and that we should strive to resolve this conflict before it creates more tension between my daughters and their uncle and future aunt as well as amongst us siblings. At first, I thought my brother really saw my point, and he seemed happy that we offered to pitch together to buy something for his fiancé. Unfortunately, she is not willing to accept this. As some of you pointed out, she seems to believe that she ranks right beside my sister and me when it comes to our late mother and supersedes my daughters. She talked about her rightful place in the family, and how she had no contact with her family because they denied her the respect that she deserved and she said that she would not hesitate to do the same with us. She also talked a lot about the pain of not being able to have any heirloom jewelry for her wedding. And honestly, I believe only a few days ago I would have been presented with her tears. But thanks to your kind words, I was able to see through her emotional manipulation. And really, now that I am aware of what she's doing, it is so obvious. I must say that my brother looked very uncomfortable. She then stated that it would be a waste to give the pieces to my daughters, since they would just sell them for the money to buy makeup which is absurd. I ended the conversation at this point by stating that I hold firm to my boundary and that they are free to do whatever they feel is the right thing for them. I am heartbroken, and I hope my brother will change his mind. So, no happy ending. But thanks again. Relevant comments. Commenter. That's great that you've seen her for what she's really doing. Good luck to your brother, because the fiancé sure sounds like a peach. Well done for looking out for your baby girls. I know they're 18, but they'll always be your babies. OP. They are capable and wise, but they should not bear the consequences of the quarrels of others that they have no part in. And although I am heartbroken by all of this, I can firmly feel my mother's support in this, as she put me in charge of protecting what belongs to her granddaughters and daughters. Thank you for your support. In response to a longer comment. Thanks again. I appreciate your encouragement. I hope their next move will be one of love and understanding, but it's hard to tell what they will do. While I don't believe they are considering physically stealing the pieces from me, I have now given the two pieces meant for the younger girls to my mother-in-law for safekeeping at her house until the dust settles. She is obviously livid at the treatment of her granddaughters. The girls felt a lot of pressure from their uncle, which is so heartbreaking. My eldest, on the other hand, calls her future aunt a grifter and says she will not accept any change of plan to accommodate her, so she will receive her piece as planned. She has also been looking forward to wearing it for a long time. I have no words at this point. I am hoping for the best. Third story. My dying ex wanted to have a clouser and wanted to talk to me as her last wish. But my wife completely denied it and said no. But I went anyway. Now what? I had no contact with my ex after we got married. 
I was recently contacted by my ex's sister because she has cancer that's terminal. She's in hospice. Her sister explained to me that one of my ex's wishes was to talk to me face to face about something important. They both insisted that it had to be done in person. She wouldn't explain what it was because she said she didn't even know. I told my wife about this, and she told me absolutely not. I cannot visit her. I understand her feelings about this, but this person is quite literally dying. We have to come to a decision, and I don't know what's the best thing to do. I'm asking here, and I want to know how other people feel about it. Comments MRS Jonesy 2012 I'm firmly on my wife's side. Like, what good could come from seeing her? She tells you she still loves you, or some secret reason why you broke up, etc. Would that actually do? You've been out of contact for a while, so I see no reason why she'd need to talk to you. Other than her selfish wish to see you one last time. And yes, dying people can still be selfish and manipulative. You go and visit her. And if in a few weeks, she wants another visit, then what? You keep going and seeing her while disrespecting your wife. Is it worth potentially ruining your marriage to see someone from your past? On at me. We don't have sufficient information to give sensible advice. What sort of person is or was your ex? Why did you separate? How did you split up? Amicably. Why did you go without contact? Even though your ex-sister-in-law doesn't know what it's about, you could still ask her for information about your ex. How has she been since your divorce? What sort of person is she now? What is her mood? Then, about your wife. What is her reason for saying no to you going to see your ex? Is it jealousy or insecurity? Or does she have grounds to fear that the visit will affect you negatively? You don't need to answer these questions here. Just think about them. Perhaps you'll think of others. P.S. I am divorced. We didn't split amicably, and we went without contact, my reason being that I wanted to retain my sanity. But if my ex were dying and expressed a wish to see me one last time, I'd go. Update. Three days later. We had the talk again, and we couldn't come to a mutual agreement. I talked to my ex, and she's still insisting that we talk in person. My wife and I just couldn't come to an agreement about this. I told her because she asked me that I would be okay with her doing this with an ex if she was put in this position. In any case, I'll be visiting my ex next week. While I'm disappointed that my wife and I couldn't come to an agreement about this, I will also be doing what I think is right. Comments. Many bite 3 535. See you in divorce. Notor of Nelsbear. I don't know. She could apologize for her actions or just say goodbye. The lack of basic human sympathy and dignity in this thread is probably why so many here are unhappy. Let's just say the sub is right and confesses some faded emotions. If an OP's marriage can be ruined by a conversation, then is it really a marriage? This sub and your wife are refusing to see your humanity. They've reduced you and your ex down to a bunch of horndogs who can't have an adult conversation. It's really sad that the top comments are accusing a dying woman of having some secret plan. When the most logical reason is that she just wants to get or offer some form of closure. OP your wife is treating you as less than, based on fear. Choices made out of fear only ruin marriages, in my opinion. Marriage is a union, not a dictatorship. OP words of wisdom, and I agree completely. Angel Fire 314 156 I don't understand why it's so important for you to travel to see your ex. I'm sorry she's dying, but she's an ex issue and you have no obligation to her whatsoever. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.